Hey everyone, welcome back to CSIco. Today we are diving into an amazing tool that makes backend development a breeze. Whether you are a beginner or an experienced developer, this platform can help you rapidly build and scale your applications without the headache of managing your own infrastructure. In this video, I'll be walking you through back for app, showing you how to set up your web app, integrate it with your front end and give a live demonstration of its capabilities. By the end of this tutorial, you will be equipped to supercharge your development process with back for app. Now let's get started. First of all, let's go to the official website of back for app. So what exactly is back for app? It's a powerful backend as a service platform built on top of the popular open source parts framework. back for app provides managed services for parts, meaning you will get all the benefits of using a parts without having to worry about server maintenance, database management or scaling. It also offers features like real-time databases, cloud code, REST APIs, push notifications and more. You can easily integrate these into your apps, whether they are mobile, web or even IoT. In short, back for app handles all the backend stuff you can focus on building the features that matters to your users now let's jump into setting up our web app first you will need to create an account on back for app if you haven't already once you are logged in go ahead with creating a new project here they also have a ai powered development option so that you can ask ai to create an application for free but we are going to deploy our website using a container here we need to import a container from our github repository as of now we don't have a container so let's go and create one i will name my new repository as b4a and i will click on create scroll down and click on create here i am going to clone the repository to my desktop so that i can edit it locally for that, go to your desktop and open a terminal here. Here, use the git clone command to clone the repository. Here, you can see the repository is cloned into your desktop. Open that and open this in Visual Studio Code. Now let's create our docker file. Inside the docker file, mention your server and file structure. I am going to use PHP 7. So here I will mention PHP full colon 7.0 as the server and Apache. Now we need to copy the files from the SRC to the destination so i will mention it as src later we will create a folder and inside that we will declare our files and it should be moved to var www and html and we should mention the port as 80 so all done with the docker file now let's go and create a folder as mentioned src and inside this folder we are going to create our index.php file so type index.php here we will write our php code as usual let's start with hello world for that write php echo hello world and let's close the php tag yeah save this and push this to our git repository for that open the terminal write git add dot and git commit hyphen m then the command what you want i will type in shell commit and push this to your repository by using the command git push now let's import our repository to the back for app server. Here search for the newly created repository. 
uh, the repository is missing here let's refresh and check it again uh, still the repository is missing so i will go to edit github permissions and import that particular repository only. here choose the newly created repository and click on save and now you can see the newly created repository select the repository and create a app name here i will create my my b4a app okay zero one and here you don't need to configure anything and you just need to click on create app which will create an app this is a dashboard of your new web app here you can access logs to monitor your apps real-time activities view performance metrics and manage deployments these tools give you full control over your apps backend ensuring that it runs effectively now you can see that our server is ready let's go and check the first output here you can see hello world is printed successfully so we can say our server is running successfully and it is updated according to the repository the next task is to connect our web app with the database you will also have the access to the built-in data browser which makes managing your apps data much easier for connecting our app to a database go to dashboard and click on parse dashboard Click on new app button and we need to build a backend. Name your application here. I will give the same name as I declared there B4A001. And we don't have any other option for free account. So let's create a PostgreSQL. Create. This is the PostgreSQL database of our back for app application. By default, we have two tables, user and role. We are in the user class now. Whenever you are using a table for the first time, make sure the class level permission is set to read, write and add field here. And click on save then. Otherwise, the data won't be retrieved or can't be edited. Now I am going to create a new class by clicking on the add class button. And here we should make it to public and write your class name here. Let's name the class as orders and click on create class and add columns. This is the first column you need to add. Here we will mention order ID. If you want some value as default, then you can give the value here and click on add and continue to add more columns. And the second should be item name. Then add and continue. Again, the third one, let it be name only. So let's write name. And save our class with three columns. Now, if you check on the interface, you can see our columns are created and our class is created. Here, our three columns, as we mentioned, is created here. The next task is to connect our web app with this class. For that, go to API section and click on API references. In this reference page, you will get complete reference for how to perform CURD operations in your web app. This is the introduction part and we will click on get started and we are as we are using PHP, we need to select the last option, I mean here, so that we will get the PHP code of how to connect the web app with the uh, database. The first thing we need to do is to copy this file and create a file here that is composer.json. 
Then paste the contents which we have copied from the reference page. Click on save and here we should type composer install which will install this particular parse, parser package to our web app. The next thing we need to do is to copy this part. That is we have imported the uh, parser and we need to add this uh, in our PHP page. For that go to the PHP page. Uh, yeah let's go let's copy this again and go to the php page here we should import this before that let's clean this up and this is not required here we should import our client secret api keys and master keys everything we should import here we will get from this area. This is how we will connect our web app to the database. Next, we will create an object. For creating an object, let's try this code. Copy and paste it here. Here we need to make some little adjustments. This is the class name or the table name which we need to mention here. Uh, yeah, this table name should be mentioned here. So that it will manipulate with the data of that table. And set, give the column names here with the values need to be assigned there. Order ID, then here order item name. Let's give some random item name. Let it be a mm, pen. And one more column is there. That is name. So let's type name and let's type my name Gino. Save this one. Now save and upload this to our repository. For that git add dot then git commit the commit message hyphen m the commit message let's type insertion and push this to the repository one of the main advantage of back for app is we don't need to manually deploy our changes to the website Whenever we are pushing some changes to the repository, back for app will detect that and deploy the new changes automatically to the website within 20 seconds. Here our website is deployed and which caused some error. Parse client is missing. I think we forgot to import the parse, parse client. Uh, we have already imported the parse client I think. No. So let's import the parse client here. Save and push this again. Refresh this. Let's go and check the code one more time. Uh, everything feels right. And let's copy. Actually, let's copy this one. I mean the parser file and paste it on the top because parse client is used uh, before declaration so let's copy this let's cut this and paste it before the use of parse client and save this one now push this again now let's go and check the website And it is working successfully and it is showing the message new object created with the object ID as given. Let's go and refresh our database. Here you can see the 
new data is ended to the database and let's go try one more time i mean refresh one more time so you can see one more data will be added to the database see now three entries are there in our database the insertion of the data is working fine let's do another card operation let's try to read the data which we have inserted into the database by using this code yeah copy this one and paste it downside parse exception is already declared so we don't need to use it again so let's remove this from the downside and try to run our application before that we need to change the class name to the orders class paste it here then here you need to mention the object id you can get the object id from the database and this is the object id copy this one and paste it over there in the code here we should give the we need to give the object id and we given and we need to give the column name which we need to get from the database i'm going to get name and one more thing here so that it will go to the next line let's add a break tag here or the name is yeah the name is we'll add the name is and the name which we which will be retrieved from the database and a beer now push this one If you go to the app dashboard actually you can see the deployment of the application let's go to the application and let's see the deployment status see you can see our latest push is ready to show the output and all the pushes our old deployments are destroying refresh this a new object is created and the name is genoi which is fetched from the database similarly you can perform all the curd operations in the back for app with the help of api reference You can also find all the other curd operations which you can perform in the back for app that is updating deleting everything you can find it find from here Also if you want the particular co code of that particular class you can get it from here itself If you are creating more classes it will be added to the api reference In this demo I have only done curd operations with the hard coded values but you can do it by taking values from the user with a input box and pass it to the parser if you want to see how to create complete application using back for app then please mention it in the comment section so there you have it a powerful back end solution using back for app combined with web for app for the front end whether you are building apps for mobile or the web back for app takes away the hassle of managing the back end so you can focus on what truly really matters your app's functionality if you found this video helpful make sure to like comment and subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell to stay updated with the latest tutorials thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video